Hi everyone, welcome to this first ever online forum with Union Bank and OLEARN entitled Rethinking Business Strategies, How You Can Go Digital to Future-Proof Your Business. Kamusta kayo lahat? I'm Jerry Ila, the founder of uh, OLEARN and also co-founder of Tarki. For those of you who are watching, please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box, okay? Please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box. Um, this is the first online forum that we're doing with Union Bank uh, to help SMEs cope with this uh, enhanced quarantine or yeah, what we call quarantine economy. So, um, you know, a lot of businesses were caught flat-footed in this lockdown. So they are scrambling to cope with the situation. And frankly, we've been talking to many SMEs and they are really, really uh, severely affected. Um, uh, so the question is, how can you survive as an SME? What can you do to remodel your business, to re-strategize, given the situation that we are in? And that's the reason why we've gathered four speakers to share with you different perspective in this quarantine economy. And uh, to all the viewers, again, please say hi and where you are watching this uh, broadcast in the comment section. But before we go any further, please let me introduce my co-host for tonight, the founder of Retail Academy, Mr. Eric Kaeg. Yeah, hi, Sir Eric. Kumusta? And uh, it's exciting. Tonight, we have four uh, subject matter experts, uh, again, for the benefit of our fellow SMEs, uh, they will learn a lot of tips from our speakers tonight. Yes, very exciting. Kasi nga, um, sabi nga, a lot of businesses hindi alam kung paano gagawin. Ano nang gagawin nila that, uh, given the situation that we are in right now? So, um, I think this is going to be an exciting discussion. So, ready na ba kayo, mga viewers natin? Ayan, marami nang na no, no, Sir Eric, uh, the, from different parts of the world. Um, so, Tagig, Meron, uh, from Albayden, Valenzuela as well. So, for those of you who just came in, please say hi and where are you from sa ating chat box. So, yeah, we can uh, say hi and um, yan, uh, participate in this broadcast. Ayan. Um, Sir Eric, uh, we'll introduce our first, um, our guests now. So. Okay. Yeah, let me introduce first the, of course, the Vice President of Union Bank SME Platforms Head. Uh, please help me welcome si Mr. JP Saliman. Hi, JP. Hi, good evening. <laughs> yes, kumusta ka, JP? Uh, enjoying. Uh, good evening. Enjoying this, uh, so many web uh, web events, puro mga digital, puro virtual learning, puro virtual training, puro virtual meetings. It's fun, actually. Yeah, do you uh, feel that you're working hard, harder now that that we are in this enhanced quarantine? Uh, well, the number one, the triple yung dami na meetings compared dati, kasi wala ka and travel time, yes. uh, traffic time, and all these things. Okay, I'm just going to know. But working harder, but I guess this is this is something new for everyone. So I guess work from home really works, no? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, sige, let me introduce uh, our next uh, speaker. Um, yeah. So, he, um, he is the co-founder of uh, Mercato Central, Enter PH, and Easy Franchise. Please uh, welcome Mr. Um, RJ Ledesma. Hi, RJ. Hey. Hi, Eric. Hi, Good thank RJ. you sa lahat. Uh, finally, it's nice to be uh, not usually a moderator ngayon, pero ngayon, uh, isang resource speaker. At, uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, I'm very glad to be with you guys here right now because I wear three hats sa tatlong negosyo at bilang moderator rin ng ibang mga forums, I think I've gained a lot of different insights which I'd really like to share with our mga kababayans at mga kanegosyante who are thinking of ways on how to adjust their business during these times of crisis. So again, thanks so much for inviting us. And for those who've got comments or questions, please make sure to sign up in our comment box right below so we can uh, we can entertain your questions. 
Yes, very exciting. Um, I know yung uh, Mercato and the, the foodpreneurs, RJ, are really, really affected with this uh, yes, yes. enhanced lockdown. So, yun, we would like, we're excited to look, uh, we're looking forward to your insights yeah, on yeah, yeah, paano nga ba sila la mag um, really strategize. Yan. Okay. So, um, and then our next speaker is... Um, she is the COO of Daxumo, founder also of Manila Workshops and a blogger. Uh, please help me welcome. Um, I'll put myself on, on the backside muna so I can uh, show her. Miss Ginger Arboleda. Hi, Ginger. Hey, RJ. And hi to all the nanonood, to all the SMEs, to all of the professionals and freelancers. Um, hello to all of you. And um, thank you for inviting me to be one of the speakers in this uh, webinar. Yes. Um, excited. And um, I'm sure, kwentoan mo kami mamaya, Ginger, because I'm sure marami siguro nagpa-file ngayon uh, using Paxtumo <laughs> because of the yeah, lockdown. Yeah, okay. Um, and then our next uh, speaker actually is uh, the Executive Director of Digital Commerce Association, Mr. MJ Panganiban. Ayan. Hi, MJ. Ayan. Hi, everyone. Yon. So uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, yon. So. I'm MJ and I'm with uh, Digital Commerce Association of the Philippines. So yes. Thank you for having um, us. Siguro, uh, Sir Eric, uh, for our first questions, kumustahin muna natin sila. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Ano ba yung, kumusta yung mga businesses nyo? Uh, and how are you coping up in this situation? Um, who wants to start? I'll, I'll probably go first na lang. <laughs> yeah, sige, Ginger. Um, so that you can show RJ later on. So uh, first of all, I, I think we're doing okay, no? Um, well, in terms of like Taxumo, it's an online service for uh, filing taxation. So I guess um, a lot of people, especially during the lockdown, needed help. Lalo na nung hindi pa nag-announce ng DIR extension to May 15, no, for the annual ITR taxes. So a lot of people were coming to us asking us like, paano ba mag-file online? How do I pay online? So uh, we've been giving guidance to a lot of the MSMEs, especially the sole proprietors and the professionals and the freelancers in the Philippines. Um, unfortunately, though, we had to cut off some manual services. Like uh, we used to give like yung mga business registration uh, services namin. Uh, these are very manual, kasi, no? so you really have to have someone that goes to the LGU or someone who goes to the RDO or Revenue District Office of the BIR to sort of fix the papers of a certain business owner who wants to start a business. So yun yung mga types of services that we put on hold as of the moment. So business, yeah, yung business registration. We also had yung, uh, let's say, yung mga transferring of RDO. So that isn't something right now that we can offer. Um, the main reason really why we stopped no, offering all of these manual face-to-face -face services is really for the protection also of our employees. So we made it a point in Taksumo, the way we handled the enhanced community quarantine nga natin, no, it's really to first protect yung aming employees from, from this. So we made sure that everyone was okay at their homes, uh, in their homes, and then um, you yeah, know, so that's that's why we decided to stop all manual interactions until further notice. Um, there, uh, siguro an insight lang. So uh, a lot of people might think, no, parang uh, siguro to masing revenue or something like that, no. In terms of like subscriptions, namin, yes, a lot of people ask. But what we've seen is that due to uncertainty as well, a lot of these business owners hold on to their cash. So maybe for subscription-based businesses, that's something that you might want to think of, no? rethink, uh, because a lot of them would be, uh, since they're uncertain of what will happen to their businesses, they don't know where to sort of budget their cash. So mm -hmm. not a lot of, and I've noticed no, a lot of our MSMEs in the Philippines, we go on a day-to-day -day basis with the cash that we have. No? So parang our cash is just enough for the next paycheck, for the next paycheck of our employees, for the next bill, for the next tax filing. So um, with everything that's been going on right now, 
yon a lot of uncertainty has been brought about by that no so not wala eh. not a lot of us have emergency funds to go to we're not that liquid um so there so we've seen that um may mga people who unsubscribe may mga people din naman who want na okay i'll do it this online i'll take care of this because it's a responsibility that i have to attend to even if um basically uh parang yun nga na parang there are a lot of things pa going on no? so yun so yun yung mga nakikita namin na insights no that maybe uh, a move that we did pala was we had the annual ITR on a one time fee na lang so we mm. did it na parang introduce kami ng one time fee so as low as 888 pesos you can already file your annual income tax return with us so this was a move that we made also to help a lot more people or a lot more businesses and we also are giving like a free two month subscription to all of our frontliners medical professionals kasi syempre di ba stress na nga sila with what their profession what they're doing how they're helping out so we we want to alleviate the the pain pa of like thinking about that there yeah yeah um yeah that's a good uh, insight um also for RJ naman i know that a lot of foodpreneurs are really affected with the, with the right, right. quarantine ha? yeah how is mercato merchants doing and yeah, yeah. Great question. So let's talk a bit about more crisis management. Uh, at least what we're doing here right now. Hopefully, I get to share my experiences, and and people get to learn. Now, um, stepping back a bit more. Now, I'm I'm what you call a serial entrepreneur. So that means that I, I do several type of businesses. Like there's Mercato Central, there's Enter PH, mm -hmm. and there's Easy Franchise. Thematically, uh, in my head, all those businesses uh, uh, tie into each other, but they're also slightly diversified. And why is that? Because Let's say that one business does not make money, the other business should be making money. It's like in the stock market, you call that the data coefficient. They should move uh, differently from one another. So let me just discuss with you the different businesses and, and how we're handling uh, this, this COVID lockdown right now. Now, uh, across all of them, uh, so we have to turn off their, uh, their camera. Thanks. So uh, okay, anyway, so uh, having said that, no, um, I, I want to explain how each of the businesses is handling the crisis. Now, uh, across the three of them, uh, what had to become evident was that we all had to do uh, work from home. And you all have to make remote work work. Uh, if before it wasn't possible, right now, uh, everybody had to learn how to do remote work. And from different stages, almost all of the businesses that we could do has benefited from doing work from home. But we've had to increase the level of productivity tools to make sure that we're able to watch all of them. Now, the first business, um, all my businesses, Mercato, Enter PH, and Easy Franchise are sort of like what you call marketplaces, where we bring people together and we sort of business match people, uh, if you think about it. So uh, for the first one, um, like uh, Easy Franchise, it's our digital platform that connects uh, franchisors to franchisees, right? So we connect franchise owners with people who want to invest in franchises. We match them um, online. And uh, when, when that actually happens, you know, there's no physical contact that's actually needed because we built a uh, we built a dashboard for franchisors. And yes, Malin, I was the boy from the Royal to Orange Commercial. I'm boy yan, boy parin yan, boy boy yung thing. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what we did is when we when we put together that 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 uh, in the sort of like a dashboard for our franchisors, it made the process made more of our processes digital or online. So it was a bit more simple for us to to actually go work from doing this crisis management. Uh, but the question now here is, paano kayo tumukuha ng mga kliyente at this time, di ba? Are people still coming in? Actually, what's very interesting right now is we continue to get our clients because many of the clients we're getting from for easy franchise are actually uh, not many local people who want to get franchises, but mostly OFWs who want to invest in franchises here in the Philippines. And they also invest in an outsourced service of easy franchise to help them manage the business. So tuloy-tuloy pa rin yan. But what we're seeing right now is really a pivot of what they are looking for in terms of franchises that they want to invest in. Obviously, 
uh, because of COVID and because of social distancing concerns and all these different things, syempre, yung mga salon ngayon are not doing too well or all service things are not doing too well in terms of inquiries. But what's actually increasing are those which are the essential services, yung convenience store, uh, yung far increase for pharmacy, uh, for water refilling, for LPG gas. You know, so really essential businesses are increasing. So in terms of crisis management, we've had to manage by all doing remote work at home. And we've had to also repurpose some people uh, right now. So since we cannot directly connect with people all being home, we're doing right now our own version of a, uh, easy franchise online seminars to teach people, basically to teach people how to be able to operate this, their, their, uh, to, to teach people about, uh, uh, you know, educate our, uh, our, our clients online and to keep uh, engaging them. No? For EnterPH, uh, the business for EnterPH, we are actually a business consultancy firm that helps foreign businesses offshore or outsource their business to the Philippines. So you negotiate that is technically not also being affected um, by, 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 by COVID too much because we didn't really have any physical contact uh, with any of our clients. They were all digital. They were all, all our business was being done uh, online. Our marketing, our growth hacking efforts were being done all online. And our workers can continue to work from home. In fact, I was very happy to know that we were able to close some clients here as well. And the advantage of, of this type of business is that, you know, if you think about it, is that you know we the the messaging which we can eventually communicate here is that uh, for the rest of the world uh, we all need to do cost recovery right uh, the big businesses in the developed countries have to do cost recovery and one of the best ways to do cost recovery is to bring down your costs by possibly uh, outsourcing your business to the Philippines because you know it's it's twenty percent of the cost of doing it in a developed country like in the U S so. When, when the COVID crisis is over, or even when it's going on right now, when you're trying to rein in your costs, you want to go to a country uh, where the costs are lower, and hopefully they can do it over here in the Philippines. And you know what? Uh, unfortunately, some people will be out of a job, and the labor market might actually be a bit more uh, larger. The, the unemployed might be a bit more larger for this one. So there's a silver lining. We can get more jobs for people in, the, in these outsourced uh, markets. But now here's the big thing. Yeah. We're central. Uh, Mercato Central was the biggest night food market. We had, we had over 50 vendors uh, which operated there in, in BGC. And because of the lockdown, and because as well at the same time, it's a place of you know mass gathering, You know we couldn't gather a lot of people over there. We had to shut down just like everybody else. So what did we have to make sure of? First of all, uh, we often tell people this one. You have to take a look at once immediately at your what, your what your funds are. You have to immediately take a look at what your funds are and see, okay, how much runway do I have for the next two to three months to cover uh, your fixed cost because that doesn't change? And what are your variable costs uh, moving forward? And that's what we had to do. Uh, we had to see, because if push comes to shove, the most important thing that you must make sure of is that your people are okay, that you get to continue paying your people. Am I right, uh, Eric? And, yeah. And the rest. So we had to make sure that we had enough money to pay off our people because when this crisis is over, we have to figure out, you know, if, you know, even if the business, you know, is not doing too well, the only, the only best resource you have are the people running your business for you because they know your business. So you've got to keep them. Immediately, we had to put in place uh, flexi work arrangements. Immediately, we had to continue negotiating with them, tell them we found out that constant communication with them was important, that we were doing something for them, that we assured at least the first salary was there. And then the rest, it's a matter of negotiating with your people with regard to, can we use the VL? Can we use the SL? Can we do different salary structure arrangements? Because may mag, you have to see that sana sila may magpap, pag may magpap, may pagmamalasakit sila sa negosyo because they also see as the owners, you're doing your best also to, 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 to keep the to keep the, the, the runway over there. Next thing, in a business like that, yeah. you've got to negotiate. You've got to negotiate with your lessors. You've got to be <laughs> good to that, that, that's the most important thing right now, and you've got to keep that conversation going right now. Now, that's yeah. what we've been trying to do on, on that part over there. Next yeah. one, this is very important to continue communicating with your clients. At sino ba yung mga kliyente namin? Yung mga kliyente namin are actually our food vendors, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing to do is, you know, you've got to call, you know, you have to call them all up and ask them, how are you doing in crisis like crisis like this? I mean. Not to, 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 no need to talk about finance. We're all we're all problematic. We're zero sales, right? We're all zero sales. 
but you've got to contact them because they're all anxious, they're scared, uh, they're fearful of what's going to be happening next. You've got to create a line of communication. I op I, I have a, I work in a co-working space um, for Mercato, and I was so comforted by the fact that the CEO of the co-working space called me and asked me, RJ, how are you doing? I know that we've got to talk about so many other things after this is done, but I just want to know, are you doing okay? So I made sure that we checked with all the people if they were doing okay, uh, in, 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 where they were, were they safe? Are their families safe? Were they healthy? Now, uh, after that's done, uh, one thing we've realized is also very important is that we were caught flat footed in terms of not thinking digitally for our business. And I'm yeah. uh, JP's over there because right now it has always been in our sort of like in the back of our minds, okay, we need other revenue streams or, or business models that have a digital transformation component. For example, what if we could have developed our own online delivery during the time that the business was ongoing? That always that always takes a back seat because of course there's the day-to-day -day thing that you yeah. have to run. But all of a sudden, this is the key business that you have to do. You have to go, you have to immediately go uh, all online and we have to figure out how to make it work. So, you know, during Black Swan events like this one, it makes me in a Black Swan, a once in a million type of lifetime event, right, which is happening right now, which you cannot anticipate, uh, we've got to figure a way to, like entrepreneurs, diba? There's there is opportunity in crisis. So we said, how do we shift now our business model? So you go back to the idea right now that as entrepreneurs, diba, what are we doing in the business? What does the business stand for? So Mercato, we are a business incubating food businesses. We help incubate and mentor food businesses. So does it matter if we have a physical structure or an online structure to do that one. So what we're doing right now is we're building what we call the Mercato Favorites Cloud Kitchen, where we are aggregating all our different vendors, and we're able to create we're able to uh, create a network of vendors from the north to the south, uh, where the vendors are producing uh, the food from out of their own homes. It's hard to consolidate them into one kitchen right now because they're all a bit uh, fearful of being in one kitchen, obviously because of COVID. But they're okay. If they're all quarantined in their own, own homes, uh, we work with them. Then we were able to get riders who were unemployed because basically you can't get people mm -hmm. from class mm -hmm. or, or from Grab because not many of them have, have jobs right now. And we're, we're now turning our, our Mercato Facebook really into a digital platform and marketplace for people to directly buy food from these people. And what's nice is that because there's a meaningful and relevance to them to buy. But like right now, if you buy from a fast food person, a fast food restaurant, you're supporting a company. But if you buy from us, from our vendors, you are supporting the income of a small food vendor, somebody who really needs the money right now in this particular instance. You are paying the salary of, uh, of an unemployed driver who really needs the money at the same time. So again, it's really that if you step back, it's thing now, we have to digitally transform our business, think of innovative business models and what we can do different to react to this type of, of crisis situation. So. Yeah, thank you so much, RJ. Loads and loads of information for our viewers. Um, yeah, so very, very important that we... Uh, I didn't realize, MJ, uh, RJ, you were talking about Enter PH and also Mercato Central as well as Easy Franchise. Those are legs in the business, right? I yeah. often uh, tell entrepreneurs, don't just... Uh, focus on one business, you have to have different legs uh, that will support your chair. Otherwise, if you're only relying on one leg and it breaks down, uh, this is what happens. So, exactly. yeah. And, and by the way, I just want to tell people who are listening right now to all learn if you have a small food business, or if you are a home based vendor, or if you're cooking food and it's really good, uh, and I think we can help you out. You're a small restaurant, Karinderia, or, or you, you were a home based food delivery business, but you don't have any means to go about it. Please visit the Mercato Central uh, Facebook page uh, right now. Leave your name, leave your contact information. I'll have my vendor recruitment people get in touch with you. Maybe we can help your business and we can get uh, your food onto our platform and we can help you deliver your food. Like Rico Robles, you said, bringing Mercato products right to the people's doorstep. Yes. It's basically what Mercato does, we're incubating small food vendors, just not now in a brick and mortar venue, but rather on technically using online uh, online to, to accumulate vendors yeah. and then using mm -hmm. the riders uh, to farm out as, as, as your last mile logistics. Yes, yeah. We're just starting, by the way. So we have a lot of uh, talks and uh, insights from our speakers. Uh, Sir Eric, um, anything you would like to say? Uh, let me just check your audio, sorry. Can you hear me? Here, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. 
uh, great insights, RJ. How can uh, you uh, advise our fellow uh, foodpreneurs, especially the uh, members of uh, the franchising industry who's totally on hold right now? And uh, they're really groping for some answers. Uh, what advice ba yung mga pwede natin ma-share sa kanila? Uh, are we talking about the franchisees or the franchisors? <laughs> uh, that's, Sarah, that's Mercato Central. Mercato Central page. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's talk first about the franchisees. Kasi sila, dyan, dyan ako na awa masyado. Uh, um, I can feel because uh, you and Eric, you become... Uh, somebody better turn off the, uh, their uh, live party. Thanks. Um, I, I really feel for them, me and Eric belong to the Association of Filipino Franchisers together, and, and we can feel the, really the pain of our both our franchisors and the franchisees. Now, number one is we have to come up, you, you have to negotiate, uh, first of all, with your, I mean, separate, right? Number one, negotiate, franchisee negotiate uh, with the person, with, with, um, with, the, with the owner, uh, with the owner of the, the lessor. Diba? to see if they can lower the rent, lower the lower the quality. Uh, low, not lower the quality, but lower the rent or have some kind of rent condonation. Now, for the franchisee, um, right now, you're, you're, you're kind of pushed against the wall, especially if you're food. I'm talking about food, no, particularly, because that's the biggest thing in my head. Um, if it's food, then there are many platforms coming up right now which you might be able to use. Recently, I came across the Ancas. Ancas is just starting off its food. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, it, like they admitted, it's not going to be perfect. That's not their core competency, but they need to help you out anyway. So please yeah. go online on on, 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 on CUS and, and use that platform. Uh, maybe you can use their platform to get your food delivered. Now, the next thing that you need to do is all of you have to leverage some form of digital transformation. If you are a franchisee, before you were relying purely on the franchise or maybe to market you, right? But at this point, you can't. It's, it's like every man for himself, just at this point in time. That means you might have to put up your own Facebook page, Instagram, do some boost posts just in your specific area for your specific franchise, especially mall, because you can operate outside. So I'm talking about the people outside the mall who can currently operate their businesses. What can you do? Then you then you try to see if you can if you can market within your own sphere and if you are allowed to get some some delivery uh, to bring the food uh, to their to to their uh, to your clients. Now if you're a service business, major problem yan. if you are a salon, if you do massage, if you are a spa because of social distancing. So what we're realizing right now is what we're doing. What's important here right now, Eric, is what exactly all of you have been doing here, Jerry. We've got to bring it to online seminars. Because <laughs> you, still have to call, you still have to create uh, engage people. Like for me, Mercato will be engaging people by doing Mercato Online Academy, which you'll probably be seeing by next week. We'll be teaching people how to be good food entrepreneurs, what have been sustainable businesses. Maybe what you can do is, for example, we, we encountered a tutorial. I, I spoke uh, with some tutorial people, other people over there, or, or, or salons. Maybe they can teach you, okay, habang, habang may COVID at may lockdown, ito yung pamabar, parang, parang gumupit ng buhok sa bahay, di ba? Just teach them simple things. How to cut? How to cut their hair, or or how, how to use natural dye, or say, you know introductory things. It doesn't have to be the whole. You're not giving away all your secrets, but you need to keep some kind of engagement together uh, with your audience right now, so that they can rely on you. Because I'm sure tatatak sa puso ng mga nanonood yan, eh, They know that you're trying to connect with them. You're trying to engage with them, and hopefully, when things get better, they will go back to you because they relied on all your tips, diba? And your, if your tips yeah. work out. Hopefully, they go back to you when things get better. Yeah, that's nice. Um, actually, as 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 much as there are businesses being disrupted or uh, try uh, what you call this, uh, struggling right now, there are also this this situation that we are in right now is uh, is also presenting a lot of opportunities. So, exactly. as entrepreneurs, we know that we're we're uh, what you call this. Uh, we adapt. To what the opportunity is uh, in front of us. So yeah, thank you so much, RJ. Um, we'll talk to JP um, in terms of the banking industry. How how are you, JP? On mute. Yeah. Yes. Hi. 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 Well, I guess we're a bit lucky because banks normally are larger entrepreneur uh, enterprises, and we do have the resources. I mean. Uh, if you notice, the banks are still open. There are some branches that might be closed because of some other issues. Maybe there's a positive case in that area of some sort. But as much as possible, we are also in the front lines. We try to keep uh, all our branches up and running. 
we we make sure that all our systems are well and running for the customers in fact just recently we saw a big big spike in not just in downloading of our apps but the transactions wow. themselves yeah, uh, in, in my end, in, in my line of business, which is the platforms for SME, we saw a spike of, uh, of, of, of business owners trying to reach out, trying to ask for help, trying to learn also, how do I do this, how do I do that? And uh, pinaka common, uh, common questions that we get uh, and uh, these entrepreneurs are asking is, una una, gano, gano katagal pa ba to? Makakautang pa ba ako sa inyo? Most of the time, but guys, please, it doesn't mean na porket sarado ang negosyo nyo, eh, utang na lang kayo ng utang. Problema rin, paano mababayaran yan in the future, di ba? Uh, and, and I've been hearing a lot of good stories also from our, from our customers about uh, agile transformations. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a customer I was talking to a few days ago. He's based in Zambales. And his business is into the wholesale selling sabon, soap. O oh, sabi ko, the perfect scenario, dapat nga, masaya ka ngayon kasi everyone wants to buy soap, di ba? Yeah. Uh, sabi niya, well, tapos na, ubus na, wala na akong stock. Anong gagawin ko next? Uh, so, ang ginawa niya was, na, na, he looked at his own resources, he talked to his people. What's the next big thing we can do? And napansin niya, meron siyang limang vans na hindi gumagalaw kasi wala siyang makukuha na ng inventory. So, anong gagawin niya sa mga van niya? Nag-pivot siya. Sinabi niya, nag-usap sila ng mga tao niya, let's support the LGU, let's offer our services, mag-deliver tayo. So they talk to some uh, wholesalers, they talk to some food uh, food uh, establishments, and sila yung nag-deliver ng pagkain, one and to the other. So that's the kind of transformations na pwede mong gawin in an agile situation. So unang-unang tamang ginawa niya is he looked at his own resources Tinignan niya yung negosyo niya, ano capabilities niya. And then he, we, we were discussing more about it. He was saying na, so ngayon ba, tama ba na panahon na para mag-online selling din ako? Kasi naipit ako eh, sabi niya. Naubos nga yung inventory niya, but his inventory, uh, only in that particular locality. What mm-hmm. if mag-normalize na lahat? What if bumalik na yung, yung inventory level niya back to normal? How can he reach out to more uh, markets. So he was thinking about going online. Sabi ko naman, well, you know what, again, look at your capabilities. Going digital doesn't mean you have to jump from level 1 to level 5. You have to go through the different levels of different phases to start learning it. Una, marunong ka bang magbenta sa Instagram o sa Facebook? Yeah. Unfortunately, hindi siya gumagamit ng Facebook. Saan ko magsimula ka na? Matutupan na. <laughs> Diba? Matuto ka na sa Instagram because that's one channel wherein pwede ka magsimula, pwede ka mag-experiment at hindi ka matatamaan, hindi tatamaan resources mo before yeah. you actually go to full blast e-commerce online. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, we want everyone to jump the gun, hopefully, become an e-commerce uh, practitioner or advocate, but sometimes you have to learn the ropes, diba? Yeah, on, totally. On the side, there's another customer of ours who's very, very much a serial entrepreneur like RJ. He's like he owns like six or seven different companies. And the, during the time of lockdown, ang kagad na isip niya is parang yung ikonekt na lahat ng kompanya niya para magtulong <laughs> So yeah. we, I'm sure you guys know this guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but he owns a delivery company, so a motorcycle uh, delivery business. He owns a platform that uh, does payrolling for a particular community. He does uh, e-commerce for mga laptops, gadgets, etc. And he just created a, an online store for chickens and meat. Imagine oh. if you could connect all of those. You know, it's the time for you to... Yeah, connect. I know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have the market. Yeah. As a way to... Diba? Basta, pinaka-importante talaga. If there's one piece of advice that I also learned myself during this time of crisis, talking to all these customers, una titignan mo yung capability mo. What yeah. do you have? Because right now, wala sa yung additional na makukuha. Supply chain is dead. Yeah. Uh, ba? Eh, eh, customers could not reach us properly and on time. So look at it, your capabilities and you gradually, slowly, uh, get those transformations going. At ngayon, kapag may naisip ka na something very interesting, like the two examples I had kanina, 
huwag ka na magantay, gawin mo na. Kasi hindi mo alam hanggang kailan itong crisis na to. We don't know, yeah. maybe two weeks from now, they announce another lockdown for another month. Patay ka na, lalo na, di ba? So, those things. And uh, again, when you look at your own capabilities, you also have to look at sino yung mga nasa paligid mo, yung mga employees mo. Tama yung point ni Ginger at ni RJ kanina. Your own people is your life and blood right now. Sila talaga ang kikilos para sa'yo. Marami naka-work from home, marami remotely. What can they do? How can you all help? Second is, yeah. yung supply chain mo. How is your supply chain? Parang si Mr. Sabon Vendor, wala nang nag-deliver sa kanya na sabon. Walang makapag-deliver sa kanya na sabon. So if in this case and scenario, marami siyang network na nag-supply na sabon, may backup siya, maybe hindi niya lang alam, baka yung kapitbahay niya, manufacturer pala na sabon, di ba? You'll never know. Spread <laughs> your network as early as you can. Uh, that's why one of the advices I gave him, join Facebook because only in Facebook you can find more and more people who probably might be in that same line of business. Uh, pinasok ko agad sa global linker, syempre, kasi nandun yes. yung mga <laughs> Can I, can I just add? Can I just add a bit more to what uh, JP was saying? Uh, sure, sure, RJ. I, I like what JP was saying because yesterday uh, on on Go Negosha, we spoke to Pierre Cardo Quasta. He was the president of the supply chain NAD Association of the Philippines, and especially if you're doing business, part of your business continuity plans, you're not going for for business just to make sure na hindi kang limitado lang sa isang supplier. You yes. got to yeah. make sure uh, when the problem happens. You have two or three suppliers, so when when one stops, kagat yes. nakapi, but kagat mo makikita ang mga mga supplier mo, de ba? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's what I realized right now. So sometimes it's actually beneficial that whenever you do projects, you ask for two to three suppliers to bid for your project. So at least yeah. wala yung isa. Then talk sa isa kagat. Oh, I need you, de ba? Yeah. And that's what, that's actually, yeah. what happened right now. Yen lang, yen yeah. Lang. Yeah. Thank you, RJ. For for big companies, I think it's a it's a normal practice. But for SMEs, hindi eh. So we we learn from this. Kailangan at least uh, several two or three suppliers para at least may backup. Um, I, I always believe that an SME, uh, the life of an SME is tied to the life of the proprietor, It's, it's mm. the first one. Now, of course, being a business owner, I was also a business owner at one point in time. Uh, hindi naman lahat ng bagay tungkol sa negosyo. Yeah. Uh, expanding your network doesn't always mean na kailangan may kontrata kayong dalawa. Mm. Uh, like, I, I, I guess you had what, this one uh, live session also where I commented na it's about the relationship and the friendships that you build. The yes. That one will be very, very significant in the life of your business. Hindi mo masabi yung, yung bagong nakaibigan mo pala could be your lifesaver in the time of crisis like this. Yeah. And of course, importante yun pag network mo. Hindi lahat ng networking tungkol sa pagkuha ng kliyente. Although that's yeah. all what we want, di ba? Palaki ng business. But networking could be, who could be your next mentor? Who could be the guy who could give you the best advice on how to pivot your business? Who could be that next big supplier? In fact, baka mamaya, who could be that next broker who can introduce you to a bigger customer base? So don't be afraid to network. In fact, as much as possible, please do network with peers, do network even with competitors kung kaya. And don't then na matututo ka about this future proofing, about this digital, about this all this technology that you want to implement in your business. Matututo ka with the more people that you network with and you talk with. Yan, yan. And daming insights. For those of you who just came in, please say hi and where are you from? sa ating chat box and also please don't forget to share this broadcast so that more people will be able to watch it. Yan. At JP, I always admired uh, Union Bank because uh, I, I think you're really aggressive in terms of becoming digital, right? Uh, being a digital bank and somehow, yun na yung papunta talaga but years ahead, you're doing it uh, digitally. Now, I know you have a lot of programs as well uh, for SMEs. Uh, you mentioned about Global Linker. Maybe you want to share uh, to our viewers what Global Linker is. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, so we start, we have this platform. Thank you to our uh, good friends in India, Sila Samir and Sumi. Sumi is watching now. I saw her name. She yes. made a yes. mention earlier. So, uh, Global Linker started off to be a platform for business networking. So SMEs, what we do is we digitize your your identity, we digitize your business profile, we lock you in in a very, very uh -huh. big online room 
so you guys could start interacting. And then after that, beyond that, we started introducing more of digital transformation tools. Like we built in partners who offer you new ways of working, offer you new technology for your business. Uh, like example, Taksumo. Taksumo is a very, very big partner of ours to help digitize processes. Yes. And then from there, we also digitize your business. We bring in inventory management, ERP management, payment gateways, and bring it all into a linker.store, as we call it, a yeah. commerce tool, which is a do-it-yourself tool. Honestly, in five easy steps, in 10 minutes, tapos mo yung sarili mong website, now it's up to you to really promote it. But we yeah. will not end there. Uh, these things right now, this all digital learning, uh, this advocacy on uh, helping people how to achieve their goals to go digital, those are the next steps for us. So more and more of these O-Learn partnerships, more and more of uh, programs like, we'll bring you to the branch. When you get out of the branch, may website ka na, marunong ka magpatakbo ng website, may payment gateway ka, makakapag-deliver ka pa sa kliyente mo, bukas na bukas din. Those yeah. kinds of things <laughs> that we are starting off, really, yeah. for the SME. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Honestly, uh, not to brag, but we will definitely change the game on how SME banking is done in the country and hopefully in the region. Yes, and um, Tarki is also uh, part of uh, yes, Unibank Global, yeah. Global Linker. So yeah, our own um, uh, digital transformation tool that you can use uh, for your business. Yeah. Available then sa Unibank Global Linker. Okay, um, I think we can proceed with, uh, let's also talk to MJ. Uh, MJ is the Executive Director of Digital Commerce Association. MJ, uh, for those viewers who are not yet very familiar with uh, Digital Commerce Association, uh, maybe you can give them a background what it is and what, what you, uh, what's, what's your vision for your association? Well, yeah, first of all, thank you, uh, Jerry, for, for having us here. No, it's a very uh, interesting platform to talk about digital transformation and on the digital, <laughs> uh, in a digital uh, platform itself, no? Uh, uh, walking webinar. the talk. <laughs> walking the talk. Tama, tama. Yeah. So, yun, so digital, uh, digital Commerce Association of the Philippines, for those who are not aware, it's been there since 2011. And um, essentially, it, it's founded by key players uh, ourselves, uh, coming from different uh, aspects of digital. So from, from payment gateways, logistics, um, online marketplaces. In fact, ang mga founders nito ay yung mga, as in yung mga multiply, sulit, those, wow. those the, the, the early days of the, the dot-com. Uh, yeah. Correct, correct. So there. And um, we at, at Digital uh, Commerce Association naman, um, uh, the only goal of, of Digital Commerce is really introduce um, yung digital tools and again future proof, uh, proofing yung mga businesses particularly with um uh, with the MSMEs in fact uh dicom has been very significant uh in the in the creation of the e-commerce roadmap of the Philippines no so essentially uh nung, nung when it was actually released in in 2015 if not mistaken uh ang, ang mga key deliverables and actually is to put at least 100,000 Filipino MSMEs transacting online and wow. uh, yun, yung, yung, yun yung key goal, no? And syempre, yung sub-deliverables nun is how to actually make that happen. So first, obviously, nga, can, you, can, can they bring uh, online storefronts? And pag may storefronts na sila, where they can actually network with their customers digitally and without relying so much on the brick and mortar, how can they receive payments? So then we engage naman the payment gateways. What can you actually offer for MSMEs? Uh, can you actually waive certain fees or certain set of fees so that it reduces the friction amount of the adoption of um, of the MSMEs? And then obviously, if you receive payments, naman, obviously the next topic naman yan, yan, is supply chain in terms of pickup and delivery. So we also engage yung mga, uh, yung mga, ating mga courier, uh, courier services and uh, not to mention yung engaging also with digital platforms and one of which is actually right now, uh, where we're trying to spin off na yung ating e-commerce roadmap uh, since it's actually e-commerce roadmap 2020 yun and it's now 2020 so medyo yeah. na-revise siya ng content now uh, <laughs> e-commerce roadmap 2022 and um, yeah I just want to give a shout out also to Global Linker because uh, they're part of our current uh, core group right now to to help uh, boost naman yung ating yeah, uh, ang ating deliverables kasi two years na lang tapos nagka-COVID pa tayo so Kaya talagang kailang-kailangan natin to digitize our MSMEs. And yeah, parang 
if you know maybe masadong mababa yung 100,000 MSME so if we can actually put yung 99.5% ng MSMEs to actually lahat uh, 99.9 of them to be digitally transacting then that's the that's the ultimate goal okay. and itong and Jerry actually and, and Eric no this is this this experience that we're having right now itong uh, lockdown um to be honest if you're going to ask me personally I'm not too affected by it because this has been what we've advocating ever since because yung 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 doing business katulad nung sa actually one of the statements ng din yung bank is banking is not something that you go to but it's something you actually perform so similar mm. with businesses na parang when when you do business it, it's not dependent or where you are or where are you located it's actually dependent on how you actually conduct business so i guess these are the type of conversation that we actually want to start doing na parang anong anong areas of my business kasi nga uh, I myself, well, actually, lahat tayo dito sa group are at least somehow participate sa GoNegosya as mentors. And sa, sa, sa modules natin sa GoNegosya, meron tayong value proposition canvas, meron tayong business model canvas, which we have to revisit every time. Kasi nga, ano ba yung mga key resources natin na kailangan nating i-retweak? Kasi baka mamaya, ito, katulad nito, irrelevant ngayon yung supply chain. Now, how, how do we actually, you know, uh, move our products from one place to another kung meron ng lockdown. So, yeah. uh, ito yung mga type of conversation. An ano yung pwede natin i-digitize? Kasi, for example, right now, no, uh, just to share, I have my fair share. When when I joined DCOM, I was actually part of an e-commerce logistics company until I moved on to to a payment gateway. And very recently, I joined uh, one of our biggest telco in the country. And, uh, for example, from the telco experience alone, no, siyempre yung telco, uh, one of it, one of its biggest assets is syempre yung distribution ng 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 yeah. mga modems to to provide internet connectivity pero kahit gaano karami ang application mo kung wala ka namang magi-install at wala nang magde-deliver ng modems stop business ka rin kahit gaano ka kalaki so yung 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 effect ng covid is irrelevant kung malaki maliit lahat tayo affected yeah. but it's one of the things that we have to also revisit is ano pa yung pwede mong gawin so maybe Yung, 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 we, we have to see what, what the positive uh, yung positive areas and not the negative ones kasi otherwise we'll be we'll, we'll end up disappointed eh. so yeah. we'll, nakalaktot ka na masama pa loob mo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so katulad namin sa telco syempre now we're trying to push now for for the ano, for the prepaid loads kasi nga that one it, this, it doesn't require interaction kasi kahit yung nasa download, communities download, yeah. na sorry, 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 they bili ka na lang ng load online so these are the kind of things that even Again, MSMEs, you don't have to be a big company to, to start thinking about that. Again, every day you have to, we always have to rethink. Ano yung pwede natin digitize And ano yung pwede, kasi because what's relevant today may not be relevant tomorrow. So these are yeah. the type of things that we should start considering and again, start discussing. And maybe there are other people, like in this group alone, maybe a lot, some of us could actually help you guys. Yeah. Um, MJ, I want to ask, uh, kasi you've been promoting e-commerce uh, for several years already. What are the biggest barriers that you've seen why many SMEs are not adapting uh, or using e-commerce? Well, yung MSMEs mismo. <laughs> Young <laughs> 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 Correct. And again, uh, sorry for uh, well, that, that's the that's the funny way of saying it, no. Uh, but it's it's really of the you know the, the readiness, no. Mm-hmm. It's the readiness. Because um, you know, to be honest, uh, thanks to to DTI because I was able to go around the country, all seventeen regions of them. They actually sent me um, to to help assist in uh, yeah, parang at least doing e-commerce for MSMEs. But one of the biggest challenges we ever encounter is you actually encounter a particular MSME or some MSMEs would say, ah, hindi, kasi okay naman kami yung benta namin. So, I guess, parang that will work kasi yung mga digital-digital na yan, di naman yun kasi ngayon pa lang, buhay benta na ako eh. So, baka ano lang yan, baka, baka fad lang yan or baka hindi safe yan. So, parang some of them are very comfortable in in doing what, what they know. And, nga, parang it's always the fear of the unknown na until, mm-hmm. nga, kasi katulad nito, ngayon, it's relevant to talk about digital and forcing them to go digital because they have no other choice. But if we start talking about this, you know, five, ten years ago, they will not listen to you. Because ang ganda ganda ng benta ko dun sa mall, sa mall na lang ako. I'll just focus all of my resources and attention to that. Yeah. So you know, Are, yung mindset mismo, I guess it yeah. starts with the mindset and ends with yeah. the mindset. Are you seeing the same thing, uh, uh, Ginger, uh, in terms of converting those that that want to do manual filing versus promoting Taksumo is online, uh, where they can do it online? Uh, sorry, I uh, uh, let me just unmute you. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Ginger. 
Yeah, I totally agree with what MJ said. I always say, like, you have SM and, uh, SMP to come to me, you know, that being comfortable is really different from being complacent. At this point in time, um, when new tools are introduced, it's your sort of, like, responsibility also for the life uh, of your company, you know, to learn these new tools, to learn what's happening, to, uh, ano ba yung mga nandyan, and to teach also your employees. I think I saw one question here, you know, parang how can you really start digitizing your business? I think for my own experience, what we did was, I'm very big on processes, no? so what I would do is write down all of our processes for the company, and then see what kind what part of the process can be actually automated so that's one basic example on where you can actually start to automate um hindi naman kasi lahat na parang i agree then yung sa sinabi ni uh, jp kanina na hindi naman na isang bagsakan you get to sort of like digitize everything already you know it's a slow process for some it's a fast process for the for other entrepreneurs so no, it really depends on like how how inclined are you to learn about these new tools? So it's so it really has to start from top down. So even if you as you business owner themselves, they they adapt or they have that mindset to change or that mindset to learn new things, it's your responsibility also to cascade it to your employees. Because you can't really uh, work on a fully digital environment. Kung hindi mo rin ipapasa yan sa mga employees mo. So yeah. So I think it's really because things work, so wag na muna natin baguhin until they're hit with a big <laughs> scenario. They're so pushed to the wall. <laughs> yeah, then we realize now, oh no, we have to rethink strategies. But also, no, in terms of like looking at it from a positive perspective, um, dapat talaga for me, no, all of these things happening, it's it's actually a time for us to retool. Uh, certain skills that we have if we are the employees or even if we are the business owners it's a time for retooling it's a time for refreshing everything it's a time for fresh start no? um one thing that i learned also for this so for like future proofing the business is that you can you should have a baseline as well like a lot of these things happening are financial concerns diba? like marami nga gustong umutang sa union bank diba? so all of these because of the mere fact that we don't manage our cash flow well Ako, i've been i've been a victim of that no when i was starting my business hindi ko hindi ko may na manage or hindi ko i don't keep track of my expenses or even my income so i don't really know like how much i'm, I'm earning as an entrepreneur so i think this is the time to start already like focusing on tracking your income your expenses what revenue is what revenue are you really getting from your business and then you sinabi nga kanina may question dito is it like sort of like an emergency fund that i was talking about no for a personal for your personal uh, use diba? um it's something like that because once you know that once you know how much you're actually earning you know how much you can be for a liquid like an event like this in the future so that's why right now i think major comfortable to me because um we have funds that will carry on uh the business for a runway um that's another term no? so like in, in a startup community in the startup community you know we talk about runway like what is a runway it's how much actually like how much your longevity of business more basically your runway and how much uh, funds we have for that entire uh, runway, no? So, dapat alam natin yan as business owners. So, once you know, once you've already tracked your income and expenses, it's the best time really to look at um, your financials. Like, this is the worst. I hope that this is the worst case scenario already. So, in terms of like creating projections, this can be your worst case scenario. And then you'll have your um, usual business scenario and then your a best case scenario. So, ito na yung time para you can build up on on your business models and look at your financials. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, RJ. Uh, Sir Eric, anything? Yeah, no, my uh, audio here is kind of uh, in trouble. Uh, nawawala <laughs> yung iba. Anyway, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, yun ako kasi paputol-putol yung uh, line sa akin. Anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, ano lang, ask everyone, no? since uh, we are into the session of re-strategizing, uh, siguro, what uh, quick uh, doable tips can you 
actually uh, tell our viewers, uh, I actually noted all of your uh, inputs. Now, mm-hmm. quickly lang. Especially addressing uh, what MJ said, no? the mindset of the uh, small. Probably not too much of the micro, but the, the ones going small and uh, mostly family businesses who are late adapters. So they've now pushed to the wall. Uh, how, how can they quickly get that, uh, get that uh, expertise and skill uh, knowing that they're losing money, they don't have customers, but they have time to learn. Yeah. Uh, what can you give uh, yeah, as one or two words yeah. uh, for our viewers tonight? I have some insight over there, no? um, and thanks, thanks so much for asking that question. Now, just take a look at the, the demographics of the country right now, Dima. The average median age of the population is about 23 years old. So there's millennials and uh-huh. millennials, and many of them are already very internet or social media savvy. That's what we can assume. We have about 48, depending on what statistics you're looking at, you're looking at about 48 to 50 uh, people who have social media accounts and, and they're on they're active online, whether it be uh, on, on their cell phone or, or on their laptop. Uh, and aside from that one, if you're talking about family businesses, especially if they're like first or second generation family businesses, most probably there is somebody who is in that business who belongs to the millennials or zillennials who is familiar uh, with using social media at the very least for social purposes, not for business, but at least, you know, for personal purposes, whether on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or even TikTok. Now, I think the key thing for people to remember right now is, I was seeing people talk, talk about their business models. Why not consider thinking digital first when it comes to your business model or social media first when it comes to developing your business model? Because, diba, you're, that's your pain point, diba? How do you get to your audience? But sometimes you say, how can I leverage technology to build my market? How can I leverage technology to reach my clients at the very start? Let me just give you an example. My business, Enter PH, was not a business where I'm talking to... Oh, uh, please switch off your... Uh, there, the audio there. Um, so, you know, some, some people, like, like, for example, my business, Enter PH, all my clients uh, are not local, but they are all foreign clients, meaning... I knew that the only way that I could attract these clients who lived abroad or people who wanted to come to the Philippines was to think digital first, was to think, how do I leverage the power of social media to attract all these clients? So the strategy there was really, how do I build great uh, search engine optimization? How do I build great uh, digital marketing where I'm able to attract these clients from abroad to come to the Philippines and do business with me? So that's one way that you, you think of it, you're using digital first to think about doing your business. Or for example, like Easy Franchise, we also realized that karamina ang mga kliente uh, would be local people who want to buy franchises. They're all foreign. Uh, they're all OFWs who want to buy franchises here in the Philippines because they're the ones with more capability to, to pay to invest in franchise. So our digital marketing went out abroad first. They didn't, it didn't come out here to the Philippines. So it's really how you think about the business and how you integrate digital into doing your business. Parang you can't think of it as a strategy specific from your business. You must think of it as leveraging leveraging digital for your business uh, right now. Let's say for Mercato right now, how I build, how I look for vendors uh, right now is vigorously online. I don't post in different Facebook pages. I use digital marketing hacking techniques to, to bring them over to me. The same way that I also use specific techniques to go uh, business to consumer or going directly to the clients, I'm using different ways to uh, use marketing online to get to them. So again, what I ask people to do is even if you're a small business owner, you have to remember how can you leverage digital, uh, digital marketing, digital transformation to bring in the clients to you. You can't think of, at this point in time, you can't anymore think of offline, offline as being different. They're part of the same continuum of doing business because people are there. And right now, the winners were those people who bet on going online. There are some, and let me tell you this one. In this business right now, many high-end restaurants did not do fast, did not get delivery because it was not part of their image. It was too high-end. Parang hindi bagay yung fast food sa kanila. So they didn't invest in doing online delivery services or, or, or at least creating their own online fleet, right? But the fast food and these other businesses consider that as important that they were with Grab, they were with Food Panda, or they developed their own in-house system. 
And ngayon, sino may negosyo? Yung may negosyo, yung fast food who said that I want to make both online and offline part of my business versus the fine dining restaurants which who have no delivery capability right now during the crisis. So again, we must leverage sometimes thinking social media or digital first doing business in a country where people are social media crazy. Yeah. I like it, RJ. Digital first. Yeah. I'll add lang a little bit to what RJ said. No? Yeah, he has a very good point with that. Um, another thing pala is, okay, a lot of people say, yeah. Okay, okay. Hi. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay there. So hmm. a lot of people saying, uh, that I want to go digital. Pero um, I think what's really stopping them is sort of that, um mindset no like uh baka hindi ko to kaya kasi i've seen a lot of msmes na ganun eh na parang hindi naman ako pinanganak ng nitong age na to or hindi masyado na akong matanda for all of these things no but i think one of the things that you can think of is really like um if all of your customers are actually on digital already and purchasing through digital platforms i think it's about time that you go to where your customers are as business owners because we always think of diba sometimes um we get so drowned with the fact that ah we only think of our business we only think about the products our services we sometimes don't think about where our customers is uh, are and we don't think that um dapat sila pa rin yung heart ng ating negosyo so kung saan man sila that's where we should be and a lot of the customers that we have right now are online so i guess we should be online diba? so that's one thing that we should think of also as smes yeah totally agree with that um yes JP you want to say something yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually maganda kasi nagbi-build up na yung idea nagbi-build up na yung message natin and uh, there was one point that I was going to say then sana as uh, in response to Sir Eric here no na uh, in in the bank so I guess something that I can share with the general public in the bank we have this concept called user journey in the agile mm, way of yes. working that's the very first thing so yeah. habang lahat tayo nasa bahay at walang ginagawa Isipin natin to. Ano yung negosyo ko? Ano yung ginabenta ko? Ano yung ginagawa ko? Kung sa panahon ngayon, paano mag reach out sa akin ng kliyente ko? That's a user journey. How do I want them to reach me? Paano ko sila makita? Paano nila ako makita? Hindi lang customer, pati supplier ko. Paano ko siya ma-reach? And this is the point in time na makaka-realize ka na, oo nga, no? dapat merong gantong technology. Sana may gantong way. May, sa social media, sana mag-connect kami that slowly ma-accept mo eh. Kasi medyo, hindi baptism of fire to nangyayari sa atin, iba eh. We're actually in fire, inside the fire right now eh. So, <laughs> and, and when you start looking at those different user journeys and you start to empathize with each and every step that your customer takes, that's when the real ideas comes out. Yung mga creative ideas dyan lalabas. And matatagot mo na kailangan mong gawin, simulan mo na, gawin mo na, pumanap ka na ng baka kagawa para sa'yo. Bago ka pa maunahan ng iba. Yeah. Bago ka pa maunahan ng iba. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, yun, sabi nga natin, maraming opportunities ngayon. And yung technology, uh, yung mindset nga, no, ang hirap ng kapag ang mindset, that's the first battle that uh, the entrepreneur has to win. Yung mindset niya, it change, it move towards digital. And... I think yung mga technologies that we have now, uh, na mention ni Ginger kanina, natatakot, di ba? Mm-hmm. But when you, you realize now you're, you're watching this, uh, example, for O-Learn, uh, maraming nagsasabi na, ano, ah, pa, hindi effective yung e-learning, etc. Gusto namin mm-hmm. face-to-face, etc. Now, walang magagawa, mm-hmm. di ba? Because of social distancing. So, kailangan uh, mm-hmm. digital. And if you're, for those of you who are watching, I, I have a question. Are you learning? Diba? Natututo ba kayo ngayon? Pwede pa kayo mag-comment kung sakaling natututo kayo. And, and if you are, ibig sabihin, digital learning or e-learning can also be uh, ano, effective as, as face-to-face. So I think yung kailangan lang natin ma-realize is mga, yung mga technologies na to, they are here to make things easier for us. Hindi ubusin yung mga brain cells natin or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes, pwede ma, pwedeng may learning curve, pwedeng a few days, a few hours. Pero after that, you realize na, oh, maganda pala to. Like, 
Zoom is getting very popular now and I realize I mean, ah, okay pala to, okay pala, pwede pala. Instead of going through the traffic na one, two hours each day, pwede palang mag uh, Skype call na lang or kaya Zoom call, effective mm-hmm. naman pala. So, yan, I think yan yung isang mindset talaga na kailangan mabago. Yeah, and to add to that, no, Jerry, no, I think one more thing, no, uh, diversity. Like a lot, I'm not talking about like gender diversity, no, in terms of gender. I'm talking about diversity when it comes to like different points of view. So it's so good na maraming nanonood sa ating session tonight because they get uh, a different point of view from all of the speakers or even dun sa mga nagko-comment, no, you, you get insights from other people as well. And it's good to see like another perspective. It's always good to see another perspective because that's where creativity comes from. So an idea really stems from not na parang uupo ko sa cafe, magdadasal ka na sana, tamaan ka ng isang magandang idea. It's not how that works, no? It's really through conversations like this, through communicating with other people, through exposing yourself to new ideas. And new yes. Ideas. That's how um, creativity comes into play. Yeah, very, very important. Yeah, so Eric, anything else that you would like to ask? Uh, I cannot actually hear the speakers, eh? but I was <laughs> I was able to jot down some of the notes earlier, and um, I'd like to thank everyone because uh, you see we're hundred plus million and uh, we're looking at ninety nine point six SMEs and probably seventy percent of that ninety nine percent are really struggling uh, in terms of uh, adapting to to technology. And uh, tonight is one example where they really have uh, an opportunity to really get out of that uh, mindset of fear and uh, go towards what uh, our speakers are talking about. Like uh, Miss Ginger said earlier, for those who have a hard time filing, her uh, services are open and uh, the price is very affordable. Okay, and uh, she made a very special offer for our frontliners for two months subscription. And uh, knowing that uh, what they're going into now, uh, it will be very easy for our frontliners or medical field people to be able to uh, catch up with their uh, taxation needs. And uh, RJ, for his part, uh, very much instrumental for helping foodpreneurs uh, with the technology platform uh, of Easy Franchise. Uh, creating that uh, space for franchisers and franchisees to meet and uh, for foreign investors to look at the country in terms of uh, the opportunities that they can uh, see. There's his di- digital PH. No? And I love what he said earlier, think digital and uh, bring your clients to you. Well, uh, JP said, uh, look at the capabilities of what you have today and gradually uh, see how you can uh, transform. Uh, don't forget to look at your own people, check your supply chain, and uh, for those who are uh, starting, uh, try getting into Facebook and Instagram. And uh, he said also to value relationship with everyone in the uh, stakeholders of your business. And uh, MJ said, you know, uh, their target for uh, 100,000 SMEs uh, to be on board the digital e-commerce, no? uh, they've initially uh, waived set up fees and training fees. Uh, he said also to revisit and uh, make positive mindsets rather than negative. So I believe all of these inputs from our uh, speakers are enough encouragement for those who are watching us tonight. Uh, to be able, for those who are not yet into digital, uh, these are very much uh, inspiring and uh, encouraging words for you to try it out. And uh, I believe the reason why you're watching us tonight is that you've taken that first step uh, of confidence to get uh, your business uh, moving and re-strategizing while we are in the time of quarantine. Sir Jerry? Yeah, thank you so much, Sir Eric, for summarizing that. There are a lot of insights. Yeah, yeah. Good thing you summarize it. So Sir, can I just one more thing? Okay, lang. Um, Jerry? Um, uh, wait a minute lang, uh, RJ. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, 
recognize ko lang si Joey. Sabi niya, JP just created a global linker account for Team yeah. Manila Graphic Design yeah. Studio. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Aroy, aroy. There's one comment yeah. in the post of uh, si Carl Del Val asking if it's time about time for the larger and advanced digital transform companies to work together in creating a, a joint platform, something like that. Now, I'm I'm posting this to Joey Alvear, uh, who made his... Uh, uh, Global Linker account, please send me a message inside Global Linker. Look for me, let's connect. Because I'm I'm trying to build a team of graphic designers who can help us create more and more web templates for our members inside. So the more web templates, the more people who can help each other. Mas gaganda pa yung platform natin. So sabay-sabay natin siya pagandahin, di ba? Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, RJ? Yeah, gagaw gagawa na nila ng Global Linker account para sa I think all of you are already in the group, but um, for those who are not just yet, I would like to invite everybody to please join us on the Bounce Back PH Business yeah. Support Group on Facebook. Again, that's the Bounce Back uh, PH Business Support Group on, uh, on uh, Facebook. It's a group of entrepreneurs, uh, businessmen, freelancers. We're just a group that came together. But really, the objective of the group is three things. Number one, the first thing you want to do in that group is we need to help our frontliners as much as we can. You can help by giving uh, donations. You can help by giving uh, PPEs. You can give, help by giving surgical masks. Or you can only even contribute your skills because right now, we've got fashion designers who are on the site right now helping design their own PPE suits for our frontliners. So please, uh, go on the site. Number two, we're also helping... Because I'm, I'm trying to build it. We're also trying to help here right now. Uh, we're also trying to help also uh, for food security because there are many depressed barangays and communities that don't have food. So we're trying to help provide food security for the people who don't have food right now and we're trying to help them out. And number three, what we're also trying to do is we're trying to create an entrepreneur and business support group. I know there are many things that are problematic right now. We're not making money, where can we get loans? What's going to be going on with our labor? Uh, what's, what's going on with these different things? How can I get advice? Please go on the group. We can connect people together on that group. Together, we will be stronger. So please go on that site and, and support all of us over there, guys. Yeah, thank you so much, RJ. Yeah, uh, please join Bounce Back PH Facebook group. Yeah, and, um, siguro as a, uh, let me ask Ginger. There, there's a question here, Ginger or JP, if you want to answer. Mm -hmm. Um, how about digital marketing tools or cloud-based tools do you use uh, to run your business? So and, any tools mm -hmm. that you find helpful? Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Ginger, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, well, for digital marketing, what we normally use is uh, Google and Facebook because we've seen that for... Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for uh, sorry. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, feedback there. Yes, my feedback. Uh, oh, there. Okay. 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 All right. So for more complex products, no, if you have like a product or a service that needs explanation, a lot of the uh, useful tool talaga is Google. So you have to create content. You have to put it out in the web. And then for Facebook, normally um, it's really for brand awareness because a lot of people are in Facebook. So that's what we use. No? In terms of project management, naman, like talking to our employees for marketing no uh what we have is slack we use slack for that but in terms of digital marketing very marketing very basic no google facebook uh and influencers we use uh bloggers as well yeah there uh jp cloud-based systems that we're using in fact uh, crm mainly we're we put it in the cloud uh but uh, and and again, even Global Linker is actually in the cloud, yeah. so it's a cloud-based system as well. So, marami nagtatanong yan. Nakakatakot mag-cloud si bakama hack. Hindi po totoo yun. Yes. <laughs> Hindi po kano kadali hack ang cloud. Kung mahack man ang cloud, na hack na si Facebook. Mahirap yun. <laughs> Ganon yun. Yes. Please okay, matakot sa cloud. And and actually, uh, getting more softwares into the cloud makes it cheaper, more accessible to everyone. So yeah. Please okay. consider your ma cloud based. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, this is a perfect time to wrap up. Um, 
uh, yung yung siguro final na question ko sa inyo is uh, what do you what's your fearless forecast in terms of how businesses will be in the next maybe six months or uh, a year so what is the new business normal so we can start with you ginger i think for me no like what happened during the last recession no? a lot of businesses like airbnb was actually a, a result of the last recession no? so businesses like that so a lot of i i foresee no that there will be a lot of new kinds of businesses coming about with new business models that we actually didn't really think of from way back so because yung nga, tama yung sinasamo, Jerry, na if we are exposed to new scenarios or new circumstances like this, this is where we now find new solutions. No? I still believe in the, yun nga, lagi ko sinasabi, I still believe in the human spirit that we will always find solution and we'll create something from challenges that are thrown at us. So, yun, so I foresee that there are a lot of businesses na bago, nakakaiba, that will happen or that will arise from all of these things. And siguro, uh, another thing, just to promote also the freelancing community, which I am dearly, like, I really love the freelancing community of the Philippines, no? So a lot of the businesses also will be open to uh, digital workers, no? So people, itong freelancing na hindi masyadong talked about before will become sort of like, uh, well, uh, an option already for small business owners or uh, even big corporations, no? Because we now see that some businesses actually work in the confines of like some job functions, but uh, rather job some job functions like work in this type of environment. Some personalities work well in this type of environment. So nakikita nila na pwede pala, pwede pala, pwede pala talaga na mag work from home. So they will now be open, more open to the idea of hiring more freelancers. And in the Philippines, we have a lot. We have like 1.5 million freelancers here. So we have the skills, we have the skills, we have the digital know-how as well. So, yun, yun yung mga nakikita ko in the next few months. Yeah, nakakatakot baka lahat na lang mag-freelancer. <laughs> but how are the freelancing community? I forgot to ask. Uh, how are they now? Given that, ito, sanay sila sa ganitong uh, system. Yes, well, not much have, oh, nga, eh, not much has changed, you know, with what they're doing. But uh, obviously, because of the, the like, a lot of businesses closing, uh, some of them lose clients, some of them, especially like, hindi lang tayo apektado, hindi lang Pilipinas ang apektado eh. It's okay. talking about the world. So their clients abroad are slowly like dropping like, sir, syempre, their services as well, no? Um, yeah. I've seen in the freelancing community, they're very helpful. A lot of them are running now webinars on how to teach employees how to cope with this certain scenario. Kasi tayo, empleyado ng corp, di ba, in a corporation, we're not used to this kind of setup. So a lot of them now are like helping people. These are the tools that you use. Tinuturuan nila ng mga bagong yeah. tools. Tinuturuan nila, ano ba, like how to maximize your time at home, how to be more results driven, di ba? Um, how to like go through the day and still have time for yourself after working. So, yun, yun yung maganda sa mga freelancers natin, no? Na tumutulong talaga sila sa lahat. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, because the, the freelancers natin are very, very talented. So it's good that they're also sharing uh, their skills to, to fellow Filipinos. Ngayon na, yan, nasa bahay lang lahat. Yeah, so thank you so much, Ginger, uh, for, uh, for being with us tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jerry and Eric. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, RJ, um, what do you think will be the new business normal? Well, just, just, I mean, just to keep things, I mean, grounded, uh, realistically, when, when April comes along, April 12th, I mean, you know, we, we're not sure if it's, it's a total lockdown and we're not going to totally flatten the curve by that time. Mm -hmm. uh, the vaccine is still 12 to 18 months out in terms of trial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I echo the feeling of, of Ginger that there will be a change in terms of the new business mods that emerge. I mean, many great businesses emerge out of out of crisis. I mean, uh, like for many entrepreneurs, there's always an opportunity in crisis. And it's really the type of mindset that we put out in thinking of things. So right now, um, in the immediate, but let's say, I say maybe in the, right after the crisis, I'm seeing a lot of businesses coming out that have to integrate social distancing into their doing their business. How do they do business in the time of social distancing? 
um, how do you re how do you readjust um, doing restaurants? How do you readjust doing malls? How do you set aside the logistics and the parameters for all the different people who are going to be uh, coming to the area? I see also an increase in do people doing uh, health and immunity based supplements, products, food based products, uh, also emerging at the same time. Uh, immediately, we'll see a lot of people going more online, really for delivery of their products. Uh, we will see a lot of development of more paid uh, webinars or seminars going online. So these are the different things. But I think the key thing for people to remember is that it's building that that, that mentality of resilience during this time. That if yeah. if we kind of keep that entrepreneurial mindset, about right? the entrepreneurial mindset, especially for us doing business, it's that you know, okay, this is the reality. What? How can I make that irritation into an inspiration to do business, right? Because we're all we are all fearful, eh? but we're all scared. Admittedly, we're all scared about what should happen next. But we can't let the fear paralyze paralyze into not doing anything. What we have to do is we say, okay, let's take one foot forward every time and say, okay, yeah. what can we do? What can we do here? Ooh, this is interesting. This is. I mean, you have got you got to look forward, deba. Right? Now, I, I don't want to wax religious over here, but the idea is that you know, plagues. And, and and pestilence and, and, and earthquakes, natural disasters have been happening since biblical times, even before God, right? So this is just another plague. It, it's, it's, it's this virus happening right now. But the question is, we as people, how are we reacting to it? Yeah. Do do we should we be scared? Should we be fearful? This is the end of the world. We're not the first people to feel this way about these type of things. But right? um, and if we feel fearful or desperate or helpless, what we shouldn't do. Is what we should do if we feel helpless is that because for businesses there are people who are more helpless than we are, who aren't sure they're gonna have three meals tomorrow, who aren't sure they're gonna have a job tomorrow, who aren't sure they're infected with COVID, with COVID because they have no social distancing in their place, who are afraid, frontliners who are afraid to go to work because they don't have PPE equipment. So our job right now, particularly in situations like these, is to help those who are feeling more helpless than us right now. And I think that's our big responsibility as businessmen and as entrepreneurs. We've got to help these people, whatever we can do, skill set wise, money wise. Because if we, you know, if it's, it's like saying, we're, we're in the right now, we just found out Prince Charles has got uh, COVID. Prince oh. Albert has got COVID. It doesn't, it's, not, it's a shared humanity. And if we're selfish in what we have, we lahat. We got. We all got to give. Everybody's got to give. Can you imagine? When did you ever realize how important it was for our janitors, our garbage men, our our grocery store clerks? How crucial they are to all of us here right now. And we've got to pay attention to them right now. So I'm saying that for all of us right now, I, I think doing business is doing good business to every for everybody. And and that's what we realize that it's not just a matter of social distancing. It's not a matter of all these different things. But that. But that more importantly, as we move forward, we need to be compassionate in business and we've got to be inclusive with the business models that we think about. Yeah, thank you so much, RJ. That's such uh, an inspiring uh, message that, yeah, um, we, we, are, we have different uh, struggles right now, right? Uh, we, are, we are all feeling the effect of the virus, but there are more people who need uh, things, uh, need uh, who uh, who help more need than than what we uh, probably need? So yeah, uh, we are here to help those people uh, as much as uh, we can. So yeah, thank you so much, RJ, for that. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, MJ. Uh, so what do you think? Um, what's gonna be the new business normal, and what's the the role of um, digital commerce as well in terms of uh, helping those SMEs uh, move to uh, future-proof their business through digitalization? Well, this particular experience, I guess, will be will be now our, our, our leverage no, in, in really pushing digital among MSMEs. And um, actually, I, well, ironically, you know, I guess we have uh, one of the most unique in terms of vision as an association. There's the likes of uh, Philippine Franchise Association, there's the Philippine Retailers Association. Um, kami, as Digital Commerce Association in the Philippines, parang we, we, we know that we have, um, we have met our, our, our objectives when, when, we, when the association is, ir is already irrelevant. Meaning, because by that time, uh, everything is already gone digital. Yung sari-sari store, digital na. 
yung nagtitinda sa palengke, digital na. So by the time when everything is digital, the association will be then irrelevant. And that's the only time that we know that we already did our job and our share uh, for MSMEs. No? And um, in terms of, again, future-proofing the business, uh, the lifeblood of the business always be the entrepreneur. And um, the entrepreneur should not be married to their current business model. So they should fall in love with it because you know that everything is driven by passion, but they should not get married to it because they should be ready to always adjust and tweak um, every um, at some point of their of their business. Na ada ba yung pwedeng digitize And if a lot of them are you know are afraid na mahirap yan, mahirap yung digital, uh, pag-aaral ako na naman yan. Well. It's not always dependent on their own capacity. Again, from mm -hmm. from the point Ginger Kanina, they can always outsource. So we have a lot of freelancers who are actually willing to do uh, digital related jobs that you know makes it a lot easier for them. And it you know in, un under the freelance model, parang you only pay for 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 a particular task, no? So these are not the likes of parang you know parang so it's not going to be a recurring opex uh, in the process. So parang yeah. So these are some of the things that. A lot of our uh, entrepreneurs should be start con considering, and again, uh, as a community as a whole, no. So there's plenty of resources, and especially this time, no. It's a perfect time to learn. We have so much time to kill, and let's try to use it wisely, no. There are a lot of resources. There's a lot of online webinars like this one with Olearn. There's a lot of um, online content and eBooks that a lot of us can read. There's a lot of YouTube content that we can actually watch. And uh, yun nga, parang yung mga tanong kanina, how, how do we start digital? Well, yun nga, isa-isahin mo lang. So from storefront to, to, to payments and maybe yung, 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 yung processes inside of the business. So everything te technically can be digitized. Kaya nga ako, personally, our, our fearless forecast is this is going to be the new normal. No? Uh, the new business as usual is digital. Yeah, and very well said. Uh, the you. new business is digital. New business model is digital. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, MJ. So again, that's MJ, uh, Executive Director of Digital Commerce Association. And uh, let me bring in uh, JP. Yeah, and JP. Um, so yeah, we're we're talking about the the new business normal. So what do you think? Uh, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. So, ako, fearless forecast, uh, there will be a very, very big curve that will happen. People will onboard, will jump to digital, but only the persistent will survive. What mm -hmm. I mean about persistent is, sino yung will seek out to learn, will seek out to get guided, sino yung maghahanap ng mentor, sino yung sisira sohen, yun ang survive. So, there'll be a, a gradual jump, and then mag fall off. Baba ba? Mm. fall off yung mga hindi naman talaga sila seryoso. Yeah. And then you'll see another plateau and then up again. So that's uh, that will happen in the next one to two years, I guess. Uh, especially now, magisimula yung akyat niya. Because everyone mm -hmm. has the time to do it. Every time has the opportunity to do it. And uh, just this, everything that's happening, everyone needs something new. Akyat yan. So, guys. Sana walang pababa, di ba? We hmm. want everyone to keep on that straight line going up. So please be persistent. Please, uh, na-mention ni MJ, na-mention ni RJ, na-mention ni Ginger, dadami yung mga online learning, dadami yung mga mentor me sessions. Uh, Aki, I'm sure, will have a lot of uh, more mentoring me sessions. Go negosyo. It will always be there. Hindi porket bumalik sa normal, meaning balik na tayo sa tindahan, Facebook na lang ako para makapag-chismisan. Uh, in the right way and for sure sigurado tuloy tuloy pag -akyat. so let's hope for that na tuloy tuloy pag -akyat. yeah so much uh, thank you uh, thank you JP para sa ningas kugon no ayo daw yung bang ningas kugon na mag start mga afterwards ay ayaw na balik na lang tayo sa dati but um, again if this becomes the new bis new normal business normal then that means those who will not be able to jump and uh, what you call this um, transition, yeah? yeah, sustain and transition to the new normal. Then will perish. So that's I think that's a that's a very good observation. Na itong nangyari ngayon, uh, the lot of opportunities, but in the 
at uh, in the end, if your business will not be able to cope with these changes, just like what happens in the past, and uh, RJ mentioned about yung mga plagues, etc. Diba? So if we are not able to overcome this, wala, wala mangyari, we will perish. So I hope yung mga entrepreneurs and business owners who are watching now will be able to yan, uh, realize na this can be or this will be the new normal and you have to have you have to go digital otherwise um you'll you'll perish again um anything else you invite them again uh jp to check out uh yes, union please. bank global linker please it's unionbank.globallinker.com please check it out uh sign up is for free hindi hindi and subscription hindi yan kailangan may account kayo sa union bank it's for, totally for free Wherever you are, whether you are a registered business, a starting business, uh, um, um, an enterprise, a, a small, medium, a micro, doesn't matter. It's all about the networking. It's all about the tools, the digital transformation. Global Linker is there for you. And we are always there for you. We're just one message away inside Global Linker. So please, please sign up. Yeah, and thank you so much. Uh... Uh, Union Bank for for providing that tool, uh, Union Bank Global Linker to SMEs. Yan. Okay. Um, let me just put put in my co-host. Yan. Okay. So thank you so much yeah. again, JP, for for uh, doing Welcome. this yes, thank you. Uh, with O Learn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sir JP. Yeah. Okay, Sir Eric. Yan. We're yeah, down to the Eric. last of you. Yeah. Last words. Well, uh, thank you to all of our uh, panelists tonight. You know, uh, truckloads of uh, information, encouragement, and, uh, you know, a, a bright future after this. And uh, there are challenges that uh, has to be faced. There are some realities that has to be accepted. And uh, as our speakers have said, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, the, it's the will to transform. It's the energy to sustain. Otherwise, you, you'll see, uh, you know, unfortunate demise of our enterprise. So thank you very much for our panelists. I, I apologize. I've been lost for quite some time because of my audio. And, uh, but then again, uh, key takeaways are very clear and uh, very much appreciated. Sir Jerry? Yes, yon. So thank you so much uh, sa mga nanonood. Again, thank you so much sa ating mga speakers. Si Mr. RJ Ledesma, co-founder of Mercato Central and in Enter PH and Easy Franchise. Si Mr. JP Suleiman, Vice President, Union Bank, SME Platforms Head. We also had uh, Ms. Ginger Arboleda, CEO, Taksum of uh, and founder of Manila Workshops and also a blogger. And si Mr. MJ Panganiban, Executive Director of Digital Commerce Association. And sa inyong lahat na nananonood and who stick with us uh, tonight, I hope maraming kayong natutunan. Uh, marami ba? Please uh, feel free na mag-comment. Ano yung key insights na natutunan nyo this, uh, tonight? And sabi nga na, these are track loads of information. Very helpful insights. So, thank you so much sa mga nanonood. And I hope to see you again. Again, this is Jerry Ilaw. Uh, I'm the co-founder of O-Learn. So, we're doing this uh, in the service of SMEs. We're doing e-learning uh, e seminars, forums, uh, to help you out uh, navigate uh, in this very challenging time. So, so again, thank you so much for watching and see you tomorrow again for Ulern Live, Sir Eric, di ba? Yeah, so thank you so much and have a good night, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you, everyone.